It's spooky season, and you know what that means. Horror games released by the dozens, and most of which are actually ass. Believe in yourself and find exit. Do not choose Satan's path. What the hell are you talking about? But today I'm here to talk about one specific horror game that was actually recommended to me by somebody who watches my videos. This was all the way back when I made that video about Five Nights at Freddy's. In a comment to recommended Signalis as a game I should play. Signalis is a classic survival horror experience set in a dystopian future where humanity has uncovered a dark secret. You play as Elster, a technician replica, searching for her lost dreams. I know out of context none of this really makes any sense, but that's kind of how the story functions. The game focuses on the core mechanics of survival horror and scavenging, looting, all of that great stuff. And I must say, I was really impressed. First of all, I have to give a lot of credit to this game's art style. I think it's really beautiful. It's beautiful in a very terrifying way. They do a great job of painting the environment. It gives me a lot of Dead Space vibes mixed with Resident Evil. It almost has this like reminiscent old school type of vibe to it, almost as if you're playing one of those isometric angle pixel art type of vibes like Fallout 2-esque. But it's a lot more refined and a lot more modern age. It's really cool. As far as gameplay goes, it's really the standard survival horror, shoot your way through enemies that are like zombies. The odd amount of puzzles here and there, it really does follow the, the standard survival horror Resident Evil style of gameplay. I've heard a lot of people saying that Signalist wears a lot of its influences on its sleeve, which is definitely true, but at the same time it's something that's hard to be mad at when they do it so well. For the most part, they have everything down that a survival horror game needs. Slow third-person gunplay, tedious enemies that get back up once you kill them and manage to get you a couple jump scares in. And of course, inventory management. Now this is also a sore point for the game in my opinion. The game only sports six inventory slots that creates this artificial scarcity idea that a lot of horror games have, but I think it might be a little bit over-exaggerated in this game. I mean, sometimes you're having to double back to areas you've already been just to pick up some ammo, because ammo actually takes up one of those six inventory slots, which is... Definitely tedious at times. On the note of gameplay, I also have to bring up atmosphere. A lot of what you do in the game is walk around from room to room looking for different notes, you know, ammunition, guns, etc. And while you do this, it's up to the setting and the music to really set the tone for what you're trying to feel, which is horror and fear. The soundtrack for this game is really phenomenal, keeping with the glitchy, techno kind of overtones that this game has, while interjecting bits of horror between the cracks. Atmosphere is like 99% of a horror game, making sure that when something does jump out, it is actually set in the right mood. And this game definitely has that down to a T. I, I would even go as far as to say that this is what the game does best. Wandering around this creepy government facility in the dark while you listen to this music. definitely gets the spooky vibes going, if you know what I mean. As far as story goes, it's really an interesting case for this title. The story has a lot of different endings that you can get depending on what you do in the game, and I really like when a game does that. But at the same time, the story for Signalis is very loose is what I guess I'll say for it. It's loose in the sense that a lot of the world building is done through notes or things that you may read here and there. There's not exactly uh, anything in the way of direct dialogue that you have to continuously progress through. It's really just go here, read this, go here, read this situation happens, go here, read this, etc, etc. I've heard a lot of people actually criticize the game for having such a loose story that doesn't really say a lot of anything at the end of the day. A lot of it's left up to your imagination, basically. But I would actually say I enjoyed that aspect of this game. The whole glitchy, put the puzzle pieces together idea that this game has actually works well hand in hand with the loose storyline that it goes for. I'm not saying that I'd prefer it when I'm looking for a story to immerse myself in, but it's definitely not something that I shake my head at at all. Overall, an enjoyable game experience. I would not play it again though. It's great for a first time play, 
not something you're really going to look back on all that often because of the backtracking, because of the inventory system. It's also worth mentioning that the game does have mod support. I think that that is excellent and something that I am hoping to see for a lot of uh, future titles. And there's of course an inventory mod for this game, so that, that does do a lot for the title. Aside from that, the atmosphere is great, the story is engaging to say the least. And on the spooky meter, it, it's pretty spooky, it's pretty spooky. I highly recommend playing it, especially if you're a fan of this style of game. I'm going to link the developers and the game itself from Steam in the description. If you want to check it out, go check it out. This has been another indie spotlight. I love doing these because there's so many good indie games out there that not a lot of people know about. If you like this series too, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. You know where the button is. I don't have to show it to you. And that's all for this video. I'm getting out of here. I, I want to find more spooks, man. I want to... I'm just, I'm just, I'm angry, bro. I'm angry. I need, I need spookiness in my life. I need scariness. It's time for Halloween. <laughs> Don't come to my house or else I'll suck your dick.